Today, I'm testing a LoRa Mojo with the device I built myself. The Mojo I'm using is RYLR993 Lite from Rayx. How did I design the test board? How well does the Mojo perform? And just how far can it transmit data? Let's find out in today's video. LoRa is a wireless technology for long-range, low-power data transmission. It's often used in IoT devices like sensors or smart meters to send a small amount of data over miles or kilometers while using very little energy, perfect for smart cities, agriculture, or trucking systems. You may have heard of LoRaWAN. LoRaWAN is a network protocol built on top of LoRa allowing devices to connect through gateways to a central server. It's ideal for large-scale applications, offering secure, organized, and scalable communication. Peer-to-peer -peer LoRa, on the other hand, lets devices talk directly to each other without a gateway or server. It's like two walkie-talkies connecting directly to each other, simple, effective, and great for small private setups. In today's video, we'll be testing peer-to-peer -peer LoRa. You could connect everything on a breadboard to start the test, but since I want to take it outside for testing, it would be a hassle if anything came loose. That's why I'm thinking of making a proper PCB to keep everything secure and neat, making it compact and easy to carry. To make that PCB, I'll need a circuit diagram. So let's dive in. The LoRa module we are using can actually operate without a microcontroller since it has a UART interface and it can be configured directly via AT commands. But for this project, I wanted to take it a step further. During testing, I wanted to display information on a screen, use RGB LEDs to show sent and received data, and add buttons for mode switching or user input. That's why I decided to include a microcontroller to make all of this possible. The MCU could be anything, like an ESP32 or an AT Mega328. But for this build, I choose the Blue Pill and Raspberry Pi Pico dev boards. The reason is simple. Dev boards already include the minimum circuitry needed to run the microcontroller, which makes setting up the project much easier. All I needed to do was figure out how to connect the correct DPL pins. I had used the blue pill in another project and found it easy to work with, so I chose it again this time. I've also created a Raspberry Pi Pico version, but since the design approach is largely the same, I'll focus on the blue pill based board for this explanation. As mentioned earlier, the LYLR993 Lite is controlled via AT commands sent over a UART interface. So all you really need to do is connect the UART pins to the microcontroller. It's that simple. The Blue Pill has three UART interfaces. For this project, we'll be using UART2. There are also circuits for boosting the battery voltage to 5V, an I2C OLED display, RGB LEDs, and buttons. Since these are all basic commonly used components in electronics projects, I'll skip the details here. There are also connectors for testing additional modules, but since we won't be using anything other than the LoRa module in this project, we'll just ignore them. After finishing the circuit, the next step was to design a PCB. To make the module easy to install, I added a slot where the module can simply be inserted, keeping the whole setup compact. To save space, I placed the battery holder on the back of the PCB and positioned the buttons where they are easy to reach. When programming the microcontroller, the dev board is connected to a PC, so it's powered via USB. This provides both 5V and 3.3V with the letter coming from the onboard DC step-down circuit. When taking it outside for testing, it will be powered by a 18650 battery. The boosted circuit on the back of the PCB will raise the battery's voltage up to 5V, 
which is then supplied to the microcontroller dev board. Once the PCB arrives, I solder all the components on. I actually enjoy soldering, but making two boards does take a bit of time. With both boards ready, it's time for programming. To keep testing simple, the transmitter just sends number 1 through 8 every 2 seconds. Very little data and it's easy to track. While sending, the OLED displays the transmission status and the RGB LEDs light up according to the number being sent. On the receiver side, it works the same way. The OLED shows the received number and the corresponding LEDs light up to match it. The receiver has two modes, switched with button A and button B. Mode A is the default. LEDs show received data, and if nothing is received, a flowing purple light indicates waiting. Mode B shows the signal strength, called RSSI, which stands for Received Signal Strength Indicator. In this mode, the number of LEDs represents how strong the signal is all eight when it's strong, and fewer as it gets weaker. Just by watching the LEDs, you can instantly see the receiver's status, which makes outdoor testing very easy. All operations from initialization to sending data are done using AT commands. The key ones are AT plus OP mode, selects the operating mode, use zero for lower van, and one for peer-to-peer -peer communication. AT plus address sets the module's device address. AT plus parameter configures the radio link settings and determine range, speed, and reliability. The AT plus parameter command has four fields. One, spreading factor. Higher values extend the range but slow down transmission. Two, bandwidth. A wider bandwidth allows for a faster data transmission speed while a lower bandwidth improves range. 3. Coding rate. Higher coding rates add a stronger error correction, but reduce speed. 4. Output power. Higher power boosts range, but also increase power consumption. Now that we've covered what each parameter does, let's move on to the specific settings I tried and see how they performed in real tests. For the first test, I kept the parameters at 10, 7, 1, 8. The output power was relatively low, so the communication range was quite limited. First, I tried it with the transmitter left in my car. Honestly, it didn't go well at all. I could only receive data from about 10 meters away, probably because it was inside of the car and there were also some trees in between. Next, I moved to an open grassy field. This time it worked much better. I could walk about 40 meters before the signal dropped. Then I tried again in a small park, surrounded by trees and plants. I managed to get around 30 meters before losing the connection. At this point, with a maximum of just 40 meters, it really didn't feel like LoRa. After doing some research, I realized the range was mostly limited by the parameter settings. I also checked with a Reax representative, and they told me that using 97112 should extend the range. I tried it right away, and sure enough, I got 1. kilometers. At that distance, I couldn't just leave the transmitter on a park bench, so I placed it on my apartment balcony. The area is residential neighborhood with buildings, but that was fine. I put the receiver in my car and I drove around looking for places where I could still get the signal. Eventually, I found one in the parking lot of a convenience store, about 1.5 kilometers from my balcony. Now, this felt like 
will lower long-range communication. Feeling ambitious, I decided to tweak the parameters again to push it even further. This time, I set the parameter to 11, 7, 4, 24. First, I tested it on foot in an open field with about 500 meters of clear line of sight. No problem at all. The signal came through perfectly. That got me wondering how much further I could go. So I went back, grabbed the car, and tried again. I returned to the convenience store where I had confirmed the 1.5 kilometers range earlier, then drove around to see if I could go further. Eventually, I found a spot on a bridge. There were some trees, but no major obstacles, and the signal made it. The straight line distance, an impressive 2.5 kilometers. I drove around a bit more, but couldn't find any other places where reception was stable. So for now, 2.5 kilometers is my personal record. In today's video, I tried out the RYLR993 light module in a basic peer-to-peer -peer communication setup. Even with hills, trees, and buildings in the way, I still reached 2.5 kilometers. Pretty impressive for the RYLR993 light module. With the higher gain antenna, smarter placement to avoid obstacles, fine to the lower parameters, and a stable power supply, I'm sure it could go even further. I'm planning to make the program available on GitHub. I'll put the link in the video description. So if you'd like to take a look or use it as a reference for your own experiments, I hope you'll find it helpful. For this test, I only sent numbers from 1 to 8. But just imagine the possibilities. You could program it to send any kind of data. For example, solar panels could send power data to a gateway to help monitor and manage a power grid. Or you could add a GPS module to track the location changes of something from far away. Or connect various sensors like temperature and humidity sensors so you can monitor crops without being on site. Have any other creative ideas? Share them in the comments below. I'm excited to hear them. That's for today's video. See you next time.